time for fashion news. Hey guys, this is India with Bags and Lifestyle. Thank you so much for coming and watching this video. It is time for, like I said, fashion news for August. So let's go ahead and get started. First up is going to be Express. So we have another company that is having some financial troubles. It's not a luxury company, but it is a, a fashion company, which is Express. If you are familiar with companies that are here in the United States, if you live here or have visited. I'm not sure if Express exists outside of the United States, but anyway. So if you are, you are. <laughs> But basically, as of April, so we're a little bit, a few months behind on like reporting this, but they are going to be closing 95 stores and they have been delisted from the New York Stock Exchange. And also they plan to sell. So this is as of May. They have planned to sell to WHP Global, which is a consortium. Hope I'm saying that correctly. It sounds weird coming out out loud, but anyway, you know, a co consortium that includes Simon Property Group. With if you're familiar with malls, outlet malls that are here in the United States, they own a lot of real estate in the mall outlet mall side of things, and so that company, Simon Properties, as well as there's another company which. I think this says break field. This is when you write your notes and you can't read your own handwriting. So sad, <laughs> cause I don't know what this says, but it's this, there's another company that starts with a B. And so they plan to sell to them. What also is in, interesting about the company that they're planning on selling to is, in this article I read, it mentioned that both of those companies that I just mentioned, Simon and the other one that starts with a B, has partnered with several retailers to help save those companies. And so that is also what they're doing with Express. So why that's interesting is because obviously if you have Simon Mall, like Simon Properties, which owns a lot of retail space in the mall, like mall retail space, and you have a mall, a small staple company like Express that's going out of business, then that hits their bottom line as well. So it makes sense that they are trying to invest and twist, twist, I was about to say twist things around. That doesn't sound good. Kind of like turn their business around, help mitigate risk by investing in companies that will basically, they need to invest in to help with their, their retail properties. <laughs> Do you want to come in? Well, I'm in the middle of the video. Yeah, I'm in the middle of recording right now. Oh. Did you eat your sides already? Yeah. Well, you wanted more of them? Well, yeah, but don't eat, don't y'all love them? Right. I'm keeping you in the video. <laughs> Hungry McHungster was asking me about the sides I bought to me. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Thought that was interesting for that for that reason. So I'm not sure of the other companies that they are trying. They have also worked on helping partner with to save. But that is one of the companies, which is Express, which Express. Okay, so let's go ahead and get this one out the way. As you can see from the title, we're, I just want to briefly touch on the Dior scandal. And don't click away, please. Don't click away. I'm not going to recap this, like recap the article, anything like that. By this point, you have seen plenty of people's videos, consumed some sort of content or read an article or something. And so I'm not going to recap what has been discussed already. I will give credit to Fashion Without Limitations. I first found out about this scandal through her. She had posted on her community page and had an article from Reuters. I read that. I have consumed her videos where she gave her thoughts. I've consumed some other videos where people have talked about it as well and read a couple of other articles too. So all that to say, I just wanted to just throw out some initial thoughts thoughts with when I was reading this article, listening to other people's opinions on it. And so it has nothing to not have nothing to do with it, but just initial thoughts. But anyway, let's go ahead and get into it. So first off, I just want to say, as far as the working conditions that people were put in, I feel bad for those people. Absolutely. Because of the way that they were treated. It's unfortunate that 
people are being treated that way. This is not the first time you hear about working conditions of that nature. And it's not only with fashion companies, it's with other companies as well. But, you know, at the, at the end of this discussion, there are human beings that are being mistreated. And that is, it, that's very unfortunate. Or some things that came to mind when I, like I said, was consuming the content. First off is going to be, I, I couldn't find any information on how long this investigation was and what kind of tipped them off. And so that was something in general I just wanted to know personally was just how long was this investigation? And I did not see this for myself, but several videos I have listened to, people have mentioned that I believe there's 12 other companies. I don't know what those 12 are. Those people have not said what those 12 are either, but that it, and I can't just say Dior, there is, Armani is included in this scenario too. But the, apparently there are other companies and this is not something new under the sun I anyway. Now, outside of that thought about kind of how long the investigation was, something that I thought about was Brandy Melville, the documentary. I believe it's on Netflix. If you have not watched it, make sure you check that out. The manufacturing, made in, all of that, quality. All of those things came up in that documentary. And so that is what I thought about when I also was consuming content and reading, reading articles as well. And what comes to mind also with, along those same vein with the made in is I had done a video where I talked about my brain block with have, having a brain block where I'm willing to pay a certain amount for certain companies, but willing to pay more money for other companies and how we do value that made in piece. Hearing this, you know, it does impact the whole made in discussion. I will put a link to that video in the description box. So make sure you hit the more or the three dots, whatever it is that expands out the details. And you'll see a link to that video that I did record where I talked about my brain block and had kind of touched on some of these things about the made in and pieces like that. But I feel like, you know, how, how, how valuable is that made in now that we're, we're hearing more of this information. And a lot of people did focus on kind of the, the price difference. I definitely did, I think like all of us know that there is, obviously you're paying a premium. The premium does come with something a little extra, but you know, I feel like you don't wanna feel like you're being taken advantage of. And so everybody has to make that decision for themselves on kind of price to make goods versus how much you're spending on them. And that's an individual decision that, like I said, everybody will have to make for themselves on that. But I do feel like it does kind of put a, I don't know, put a dark cloud over the made in piece, I feel like, made, like where it's made in, like how much does that really matter? especially when you're talking about this situation where things have come out of this investigation in that article that Reuters had. Also, this is one of the reasons why super fakes have become so good. We have like the advancements of technology, but then also you, there are rumors that these pieces are made in the same factories. So, you know, are they using the same materials? You know, like just qu all questions about all of that comes up and so you where these where these products are just so good and so close you just wonder you know what what is that difference now and and, and are we going to get to the point where you can't tell and you can't even say shopping pre-owned is that is a risk and it's been a risk and it does make it scary about shopping pre-owned but also you hear about Periodically, you'll hear about situations where people will basically buy a real item and return a fake one and they can't tell the difference. So that doesn't protect you when you buy things from the store even. So it's just a, a, a full gambit here of Pandora's box. But I also thought about that with this situation too. And also just kind of the difference and how can you tell and and 
how much of that difference is there? I know there is one because I'm a stickler on hardware. I'm a stickler on how le leather goods feel. And so I do feel like there are some differences with that. But as far as super fakes go, I don't know. I, you know, I think some are better than others, definitely. But it's just a, a lot of, a lot of thoughts ram through my mind. I also want to say that I did see people talking about, you know, whether or not you should boycott Dior and all of those things. And I did want to touch on that quickly because first off, there are, there's first, I want to say you do, you, you do what you feel comfortable with, with your money and no one can tell you otherwise. There, this is not the first company that is going through this. This is not going to be the last. And there have been fast fashion companies that have been, oh, before I get into that, um, and I'll let, I say that to say, like, if you are going to decide, let me not support Dior, you may want to make an informed decision and educate yourself on who owns Dior, parent company, things like that. Because just because you decide to stop buying from Dior, but you continue to buy from like Loewe, for example, or you buy a bottle of champagne, or you buy Hennessy, because LVMH is the parent company, you're still indirectly supporting, even though you're not buying from that company. And maybe that's okay with you, or maybe it's not. I'm just throwing that out there as, if you're saying you don't wanna buy from a company, be informed at how, what that company has its tentacles in and what they own. Autumn Beckman has a great video where she talked about actually all of the things that LVMH owns. You will be so shocked at, and it's not just fashion just so you know. So just make sure that if you're planning on not supporting a company financially with your money, knowing, understanding what other business ties they have. And if, if you're going to try to make a sale, hit them in their pockets, you know, just making sure you educate yourself on that. And that's totally your decision on whether you want to do that or not. And everybody has to make that decision for themselves and what that looks like. And no one should be shamed for whether they continue to purchase or don't. I do want to say also that it's not just luxury. We have fast fashion companies that have been blamed and accused of stealing independent and small companies' designs, like straight up, like no inspiration, just straight up take it and do it. There have been some things that have come out recently about like over the last couple of years about fast fashion companies and the level of chemicals in those, in those clothing items. Also, luxury company basically making culturally insensitive products, taking from other smaller designers. I, like, so it's not just this. There are so many facets of this, and it doesn't just stop with luxury. It doesn't just stop with fashion. So you really have to make a determination on how what extent are you going to to what extent are you going to go and what you feel comfortable with whether you're going to decide to like not buy from a company or continue to buy from a company or reduce your spend or you know like so like i said it's not just fashion it's all over the place because people are trying to make more money and they're moving manufacturing well already have moved manufacturing to a lesser expensive place and the treatment of those workers and conditions of the workers, things like that comes out and it's not just clothing. So you really do have to inform yourself and make a decision on, like, like I said, what, where do you choose to use your money? The, like, this is not the first time, this is not the last time. And really, if you decide to not purchase from anybody that's in a scandal, you will have nobody to buy from. That doesn't mean that it's okay what's happening, but, it's almost impossible to not have financially supported or to financially support somewhere in the future that will have an issue. So you just have to really do what you feel comfortable and to the extent you feel comfortable, whatever that looks like. So that's all I'm gonna say about this, this whole situation that's flooding the social media channels right now. Now, next up on fashion news is gonna be Celine. So we've definitely seen a trend over this over several years where a lot of luxury companies are moving into the lifestyle space where they're making homeware, they're making furniture, things of that nature. And so Celine has a Pilates 
collection that they're coming out with. So, and Pilates is not an inexpensive, I keep wanting to say sport, it's not an inexpensive exercise or lifestyle, whatever you want to call it, to invest in with those with private instructors or those comp the, going to those gyms. And so it does make sense why they're jumping into making products. And let me know if you plan on do, jumping in or buying from these products. But I, I thought it was interesting that they are focusing on, on according to fashionista.com, on Pilates pieces. They will be made available in October, so make sure you check them out. Now, luxury and restaurants, speaking on the lifestyle portion of this, I've talked before about luxury companies investing more in experiences, lifestyle type of things. And so now two other companies that have jumped into the pool are Coach and Kate Spade. So Kate Spade has opened a pop-up shop in Dubai Mall in the Bloomingdale. So it's a coffee shop. So I would say like, as you can see from the images here, they're, they're not impressive. It's a coffee shop, so you know, take for what it is, but maybe they're just testing it out this out to see what they want to do next. But I just, you know, found this interesting as well. And then also coach. Now, look at this coach restaurant. This is a coach restaurant as well as coffee shop and coach knocked it out of the park. This looks amazing. And they have opened a restaurant in Indonesia in Jakarta. So it's located at the Grand Indonesia Mall. So if any of you all have visited either dubai or indonesia or plan to go let me know because i would i want to know more <laughs> these companies are not just wanting to sell you products but also integrate in other ways so not just you think about them when you need a new shirt or you need a handbag or a pair of shoes but also you have makeup you have perfumes you also have lifestyle pieces as well as restaurants too to also continue to keep you in that funnel, which is definitely very interesting and in them evolving and finding new ways to make money off of you basically. So let me know your thoughts on the topics that I have shared today. And I thank you so much for listening and I will talk to you again soon. Bye.